Okay, today we are going to look at two-step equations. Before we get started, make sure you have your notebook, that you have a sharpened pencil and a ruler ready to go. So open your notebook to the first available page and get your paper set up for Cornell Notes. Notice I have the lesson and the title of the lesson. Today's learning target is solve two-step equations with one variable. So once your Cornell, Cornell note paper is set up, take the time to write an essential question based on the learning target. And what you can do is hit the pause button and then as soon as your notes are set up you can hit resume or play and continue on. Okay, so if you set your Cornell note paper up you should have come up with an essential question like this, how do you solve two-step equations? Very straightforward add the words how do you in front of the learning target and you have your essential question. Now for a few seconds I want you to just put your pencil down and watch and listen and if you need to pause and let it sink in a little bit you can do that but this is just review. What I have here is an equation remember this is an equation because it has an equal sign. Also remember that equations don't necessarily have to be true for example 7 equals 6 is a true equation because it has, or excuse me, it is an equation because it has an equal sign, but it's not true because 7 does not equal 6. Now the question is, is this equation, 2 times 3 plus 5 equal to 11, is it a true equation? And the way you determine whether it's a true equation is you work through the order of operations and simplify. First you look for parentheses. Now this expression on the left, or this equation, has a set of parentheses, but there's no work to be done inside. So there are no parentheses. Then you look for exponents. In this equation there are no exponents. And then you look for multiplication and division. And 2 times 3 is multiplication, so I'm going to do that step first. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 5 equals 11. And then you finish by looking for addition and subtraction. 6 plus 5 is addition, and that equals 11. And because both sides of this equation are both 11, it's a true equation. Now really all I wanted you to see was how the order of operation works when you're simplifying expressions or simplifying numbers. Last week we learned how to solve an equation, a one-step equation, and I didn't tell you this at the time, but really what you're doing when you're solving an equation is you're working through the order of operations, only you're going backwards. So in this equation, n minus 5 equals 11, the first thing I'm going to do is look for addition or subtraction. So I have the variable n. Is there anything added or subtracted from it? And in this case there is, minus 5, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to work backwards and do the opposite. So instead of minus 5, I'm, I'm going to add 5. And I do that because minus 5 plus 5 are opposites and they cancel each other out. What I do on one side of the equation, I have to do on the other side. The 5's cancel, I'm left with n. 11 plus 5 is 16, so my answer is n equals 16. And the solution is also an equation. n equals 16 has an equal sign. It's an equation. Now remember, we were focusing on showing all the steps, writing neatly, and working down the page. Okay, here comes problem one. Copy this down, and again, you can hit the pause button while you're copying, and then hit play to start it back up. So this equation is a two-step equation because it takes two steps to solve the equation. But as you're looking at the equation, you're looking at the order of operations and you're going to work backwards. So first identify the variable. It's this term right here. Is there anything added or subtracted from the variable? And the answer is yes. I'm subtracting 5, so I do the opposite by adding 5. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Minus 5 and plus 5 cancel each other out. I'm left with 2n, or 2 times n, equals 17 plus 5 is 22. So I've added or subtracted, and now I'm going to go up the order of operations and look at the next step, multiplication or division. Is there anything multiplying or dividing by the variable? And the answer is yes. 2n means 2 times n. So the opposite of 2 times n is divide by 2. And what I do on one side? I do on the other side. The 2's cancel. I'm left with n 
equals, and 22 divided by 2 is 11. And there's my solution. And again, notice that it's n equals 11, not just 11. You start with an equation, and you solve, and you end with an equation. Okay, the next problem, notice, is problem 3. That means I'm skipping problem 2 for now, but I'll come back to it. So make sure in your notes you don't write problem 2, but you write problem 3. And this problem says solve for p. Now we're going to follow the order of operations backwards, just like we did on the last one. What's different about this problem is this line means divide, and what I'm dividing is the whole top by the whole bottom. So in a problem like this, it's helpful if you write in a set of parentheses, because the top is implied to be its own part of the problem, and the bottom is its own part. So I look for any addition or subtraction. Now when I say addition or subtraction, I want to know if there's any addition or subtraction in the problem outside of the parentheses. And there are no addition or subtraction outside, so I'm going to move on to the next step. Is there any multiplication or division? And in this case, p minus 7 is being divided by 2, so I'm going to undo the division by multiplying. So I multiply the left-hand side of the equation by 2, so that the divide by 2 cancels the multiplication by 2. And what I do on the left side, I have to do on the other side, or the right side. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. And what's left is p minus 7. So I keep working up the order of operations. Any exponents, any parentheses. Nope, so then I start over. I go back down and start over with the order of operations. Any addition or subtraction? Yes, p minus 7. So the opposite of minus is plus. So I add 7 to both sides. The minus 7 and the plus 7 cancel. I'm left with p. Now here's where this adding and subtracting sign numbers that we learned in chapter 1 is really helpful. Minus 20 or negative 20 plus 7. Two numbers. Both signs are different. So I take the bigger number 20, subtract the smaller number 7, get 13, and keep the sign of the bigger number. That's the negative part. So my answer is p equals negative 13. Again, if you get to the point where it starts to get confusing, hit the pause button, back it up, watch it again, and then make sure you're taking good notes.